Hello and welcome to the vlog. Today's video is a follow-up to one of our more popular videos that we've produced. That one was 10 harsh realities about RV life. This is going to be 15 more harsh realities about RV life. Yeah, so I suppose we should introduce ourselves first. It right? helps. We're Ben and Rebecca of His and Hers Vlogs. We've been location independent travelers since about 2015. Yeah. Uh, we do have a home base in Seward, Alaska. And for the first seven, eight years that we RV'd, we had a Class A motorhome, uh, Tiffin Allegro, yeah. 32 feet. It's like, we, we got lucky. A big old trailer behind yep. it with toys. Uh, last, let's see, about a year ago now, we switched over to a four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Fuso uh, truck with a cabin, a mm -hmm. custom-built cabin on the back. The uh, RV got smaller, but the world got bigger. <laughs> that's right, and that's the point. Uh, that's exactly what we're preparing for now, is uh, outfitting the truck to head overseas so that we can drive it around the world. Before we get started, uh, let's do a quick plug for our website, hisandhershub.com. One central location mm -hmm. for everything his and hers. We have uh, classes, uh, forums, more engagement. It's just all good stuff over there. Make sure you subscribe for our easing and monthly newsletters. So I'm going to cut into number one here. Okay. And we're going to start it off with a bang. <laughs> All right, am I ready to drop this bomb? Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> RVing is not just for old white people anymore. <laughs> it is a very diverse community of outside the box thinkers. I don't care if you're gay, straight, left, right, up, down, brown, yellow, white, red, I do not care. There is an accepting community out there. And I think you should not let that uh, steer you away from you know getting into the RV life. Totally agree with you. Are we moving into number two now? You can't take everything with you. Marriage and <laughs> RVing is all about compromises. In the past RV, mm -hmm. she was allowed to take as many shoes as I had fishing rods. There were eight fishing rods, just so. So clear. she was well prepared. <laughs> But no, um, it's Literally. a small space when compared to a house. It is. Get over it. You can't take everything. Maybe pick and choose some hobbies that consume less real estate in a mm -hmm. camper. You know, there were a lot of things in a Nelly, our past Class A, that we brought and just never used. Okay. You want to make sure that what's in your camper, no matter what the size, it's just stuff that you're going to use. It's true. And the smaller we've gotten, the less we carry of food and kitchen yeah. stuff and shoes. And you oh. get it over time, you get better and better at this. Yep. Moving right along, number three, national parks are not all they are cracked up to be. You know, it is kind of, I've heard the common bucket list. I want to visit all the U.S. national parks. And that's not always a pleasant experience, especially during peak tourist season. And heck, even that shoulder season in our experience has been quite busy. Well, it's a great idea in theory, mm -hmm. but if you don't love crowds and love rules, odds are you're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable in the national parks. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you can visit the nearby areas and probably see a lot of the same things, but not necessarily have to go in the park. Yeah, think or outside the park. Parks or, yeah. yeah, there's lots of alternatives to it, but don't think that um, you have to hit every single one of them. And also don't expect it to be like the most wonderful experience you've yeah. ever had. Yeah, you know, they're beautiful <laughs> places and they need to be protected from mm -hmm. the man so they and don't we really get are ruined. Big proponents so of that. we believe in that, but just that experience um, of they have to be protected from the visitors <laughs> equally as much as the man. Uh, but I do want to say before we wrap this one up, there are a handful of gems out there mm -hmm. of national parks that are hard to get to or just not that visited off or the beaten path. yeah, places that have uh, off the beaten path access. And uh, those are gems that you're going to want to find. Moving right along to number four, you are going to make some really stupid mistakes. 100% guaranteed. In part, I'm sure a lot of it is the learning how to travel, learning your vehicle. It's mm -hmm. a steep learning curve to enter into this life or change vehicles. It's going to happen. 
The good thing is the vast majority of them are recoverable. There's rub marks right there. Yeah, dude, there's the source of our problem. And just the sheer water pressure backsplashed out of our hose into my face and chest. Number five, if you travel with a, a boat or even kayaks, it's a whole new world. Around 2017, we noticed all of these, uh, not roadblocks for say, but checkpoints. checkpoints for aquatic invasive species. It's become a big problem. I can definitely speak for the Western side of North America on this yeah. issue. And it's a, yeah, it's a very serious problem. So if you travel with boats or kayaks, make sure they are dry. Uh, when you pull them out of the water and are traveling with them and then be prepared to pull over when you see those signs on the highway. Number six, well, we're keeping things PG, so I'm gonna say bad things happen. <laughs> Poop is a YouTube friendly word. That's right. And I could probably spend all day trying to tell you these stories or we could just show you. A tree fell on the motorhome last night. It is definitely come to rest on top of the motorhome. <laughs> I was trying to be like, stop! Um, yeah, I was getting that shot and I forgot I had the boats in the back of the ATV. I have replaced the water valve, which is this piece right here. Thank you. Look what I found, honey. Number seven, once you've had a little taste of location independence and full-time RVing, you're never gonna wanna go back to, we'll just call it the more traditional lifestyle of a Monday through Friday job. There is a whole world out there that exists, well, one is working Monday through Friday, nine to five. And once you get a taste of not being regulated to that lifestyle, it's very refreshing. And you that does just not- want more. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean that uh, you're not working. There are tons of ways to earn a living in this world while full-time RVing. And if you haven't uh, hit the road and figured it all out already, we actually have a uh, playbook for location independence. It's really awesome. You can visit our website, freedomisthenewwealth.com, and you can uh, download it, and it will definitely get you off on the right foot. Number eight, if you're like us and the force is strong with you, <laughs> you're probably gonna end up wanting to up the ante. That's definitely what's mm. happened for us. We've traveled around the lower 48 in North America, not to say that there's not still things for us yeah. to go see and do, and we're kind of saving some for yeah. later, but we are definitely ready to go explore overseas. We've both traveled overseas quite a bit and really looking forward to overlanding well, yeah. over there. We have a shared dream of being able to just travel the world in a very casual and sustainable lifestyle, and this new truck is going to lend itself to that very well. Yeah. But it's not surprising, the most, most of the people we know, they end up getting a boat or a different kind of vehicle or traveling other yeah. parts of the world. It's whatever it is for you. Uh, don't be surprised, it's gonna happen. Number nine, times they are a changing and cannabis is legal recreationally. <laughs> uh, you know, it may not, There's each state has its restrictions, but pretty much the entire West, West coast. coast is a green coast and we don't want people to be shocked if they're in a social environment and they run across somebody uh, consuming, partaking recreationally. Obviously in public, you know, the whole state to state deal. But if you're in the middle of the desert around a campfire and people are relaxing, you know, you're just as apt to see somebody consume recreational marijuana or cannabis as you are to glass of wine yeah or a beer yep. so it's a whole new world out there guys and the just 21st century yeah, don't be surprised if you see it number 10 now this is one that we hear everywhere we personally see and experience yeah. no matter where we go and even here at home for us in alaska 
The weather, this isn't normal for the weather. This isn't normal for summer. This isn't normal for winter. The point is, no matter where you go on the planet, and regardless of whatever reason it's happening, we can all agree that the weather is highly unpredictable these days. No. So It's more like just a suggestion, you know, like it's winter right now, or it's <laughs> spring or summer right now. It's maybe the yeah. rainy season. Number 11, I think most of us have experienced this one, whether we full-time or not, but annoying campground hosts. Power-hungry people that feel their need, the need to stick their nose into your business. A lot of times they don't even let you get into your campsite before notifying that you need to register and pay. Uh, it, most campground hosts are absolutely amazing and they do a great volunteer service. Some actually are even yeah, paid. We wouldn't have campgrounds yeah, if they weren't there. Exactly. But there are a handful that are just power hungry and you know, just laugh them off. That's all mm -hmm. I can say. Number 12, and this one's a challenge to talk about, really hard to sum up and pretty personal. You're gonna find out who your true friends are on the road and at home. You know, Home is a different question because you are now going full time. But a lot of times when you return home, you know, life went on for everybody. your everybody else. You know, life went on for them and you. And I don't know what it is, but there's a certain dynamic that you used to hang out. You guys are still friends, but yeah. the priority has not been placed on your friendship anymore. Well, they so, found other people to hang out yeah, with. Yeah, you know, when you do return to your hometown, your true friends are the ones that are going to make time and meet up with you in a very timely manner. Mm -hmm. You know, the same goes when you're on the road yeah. and traveling through a town. I totally agree. Like, you're going to have the really good friends that they'll drive 100 miles to yeah. meet up with you and go for a camping trip. You'll have other friends that you call and ask if you can park in their driveway, and that's the only way you get to see them. Yep. <laughs> and on a positive note for being out on the road, you are going to a bond with people that you meet who are also travelers and create lifelong friendships. And also along the way, find people that help you out and end up becoming friends. That would have been true the for kindness and us generosity. with yeah. the social media channel and this amazing community that yeah. we've developed. You guys are awesome and thank you so much. Unlucky number 13, you cannot just park for the night at any Walmart in the country or Canada for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, extremely problematic in the cities with large urban populations. Those Walmarts are most likely going to uh, prohibit overnight parking. But when you're out in the country, you generally speaking do not have any problems. And we've learned to embrace Walmart over the years. We have. And not just Walmart, but Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops. Yep. There's a handful of box stores that uh, you can stay overnight. Uh, there's apps that help yep. you find them. And we've even done date nights when we parked in the parking yeah. lot. But just remember that not every Walmart is welcoming and the cities, there are always going to be problems when you're looking for free places to park for the night. Number 14, you are going to become one of those snobs and hate peak travel season. As you start to travel more, especially full time, you're really going to embrace that shoulder season, off season travel. The weather can still be great mm -hmm. and you don't have to share the space with bazillions of people. It sounds messed up, but when the kids go back to school <laughs> towards the end of August, tourism just dramatically drops. Yep. And that's our favorite time to go visit destinations. Yeah, and the thing is, is you can set your schedule to follow the seasons, the shoulder season travel and really embrace that kind of uh, aspect in your lifestyle. Wrapping things up, number 15, if you do happen to not full-time or full-time part-time like we do, <laughs> um, or if you do just return back to home life after mm -hmm. full-timing, you're going to find it very overwhelming. We are by no means pack rats or hoarders and have a cluttered home, but... It's just the grand yeah, space and the stuff. Exactly, but after being on the road in such a living day-to-day -day in such a small environment, even on Nelly, the big old motorhome coming home was very much a shock 
It really was. I still remember the first time we came home after seven months on the road and I looked around and was just like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't and need all this stuff. The most recent time we came home, we kind of found ourselves just sticking to the master suite. We have an office, a bedroom, a bathroom, and half yeah. the time we don't really use, use the rest of the 90 house. 90% of the rest of the house. So. All right, guys. Well, that is a wrap for 15 more harsh realities about RV life. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not already and uh, visit our website, hisandhershub.com for more engagement. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you out on the road. Bye.